Good evening, everyone. My name is Alex Elliott. I'm the Senior Manager of Events and Engagement for the Public Programs Department of California Institute of Integral Studies, a nonprofit university in San Francisco. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome you tonight to Richard Tarnas on the Planets in 2022. As many of us are descendants of settlers, immigrants, or descendants of those forcefully brought to this continent, we CIIS public programs must recognize and never forget that our university's building in San Francisco occupies traditional unceded Ramaytush Ohlone lands. If you're interested in learning more about native lands, languages, and territories, we encourage you to visit native-land.ca. Before we get started, I'm honored to introduce our speaker, Richard Tarnas. Richard Tarnas is the founding director of the Philosophy, Cosmology, and Consciousness program here at CIIS. He was formerly the Director of Programs and Education at Esalen Institute and is the author of The Passion of the Western Mind, a history of the Western worldview from the ancient Greek to the postmodern, widely used in universities. His subsequent book, Cosmos and Psyche, Intimations of a New Worldview, received the Book of the Year Prize from the Scientific and Medical Network and is the basis for the upcoming documentary series, Changing of the Gods. He's a past president of the International Transpersonal Association and served for many years on the Board of Governors for the C.G. Young Institute of San Francisco. We're going to begin tonight's live streaming event with a special advanced screening of the opening episode of the new documentary series, The Changing of the Gods, followed by Richard Pre Richard's presentation and Q&A. This special screening is only available to those of you who are joining us live tonight, right now. So if you visit this event later or you're watching this for the first time after that live stream, please refer to the information below this video to learn more about how to find and watch that episode. Hi, everyone. Um, can, I, I think I'm, I'm audible. And um, well, that's the first time I've I've seen all the credits uh, and uh, quite a what a collective effort on part of so many people. Uh, welcome, welcome to our, our annual uh, overview of the planetary situation, the archetypal state of the of the world that we try to um, discern uh, around this time of the year. Uh, and uh, while a little bit, a little bit older, um, especially during these kinds of years, it seems like the uh, Chronos has been particularly potent. Let's just say that. So that was changing of the gods, the first episode. Uh, the meaning, of course, uh, of the gods, the changing of the gods. It has to do with that great uh, passage from Jung. Uh, that he wrote in uh, 1956 uh, in the undiscovered self when he when he described the um, our this overall time of history that we're in as uh, a time of such radical uh, transformation of of death and rebirth destruction and and creation happening at such a profound level that he he said um, it is the kairos. Uh, the right moment, uh, the Greek word kairos, the right moment for a changing of the gods of the fundamental principles and symbols. And that's basically the, God, the gods have to do with that, um, that deep kind of archetypal shift that can happen in a civilization, in a, in a, in a culture in a, that, that shifts one epoch to another as a result of really the, the very... Mm, foundations and assumptions and principles uh, and, and dominant symbols uh, that, that shape our consciousness and, and that um, help us navigate in life and give us a sense of orientation. All those go through some fundamental change, usually as a result of a crisis, um, which of course, uh, there are a few little signs of that in our time. Um, the, I, I want to just say a, a brief word about the episode that uh, 
uh, many of you just saw and that others who are watching this as a recording later uh, can see separately. Uh, Changing of the Gods is, is it's based on Cosmos and Psyche, uh, where I traced a number of the, the most important planetary cycles and the, and the correlated uh, archetypal patterns in history. Uh, and I, I tracked these quite, quite carefully through, through history over many centuries. Um, but this series, a uh, 10 part documentary series, uh, Changing of the Gods, um, focuses on one important cycle, the Uranus Pluto cycle. Uh, uh, and particularly the alignment that we have just uh, undergone and uh, we're still in the kind of uh, overflowing wave form uh, in, in, in our time. Although I've been doing this research pretty steadily uh, for, you know, since the 1970s, so almost, almost half a century now, uh, I'd, I'd finally gotten around to written, writing uh, Cosmos and Psyche uh, about 20 years ago, uh, basically 2001 to 2004. Uh, and so all the, all the writing wa uh, was done, that went into the book was done before this recent Uranus Pluto square alignment uh, emerged. It began, it began a few years later, around 2007. I mean, when, they, when, when we have something like 2007 to 2020, I mean, it's a it's a waveform, it, and it, it, it's coming in, I mean, uh, in the same way that uh, there is a, a shift in the, in the light before dawn and then at dawn and then after dawn, same thing at sunset. It's, it's got that kind of um, uh, gradations, and uh, it's, it's not an on and off, again, light switch, and you can't measure it right down to, the, uh, to a specific uh, day or year or month. But... I did a lot of uh, kind of meticulous uh, research tracking when things happened, what month they happened, even what day, uh, that, that bore this, the archetypal signature of that particular uh, alignment. That, and um, it was pretty clear that the, that the uh, conjunctions and oppositions of the outer planets, those correlations tend to occupy a, a good um, 15 degree orb uh, for example, the 1960 to 72 period, uh, and uh, the squares a little closer to 10 degrees, uh, and that's um, the in this case, this uh, 2007 to 2020 was the approximate curve of that. Uh, but the pattern of the reason I'm bringing this up right now is that because I had finished the book prior to the um, prior to the uh, film coming out. Uh, sorry, prior, prior, way prior to the film coming out, but prior to the um, the the transit, the next world transit of Uranus square Pluto, uh, uh, what I could do in my book was basically say, well, here's what happened in the past historical correlations uh, of uh, with that particular cycle, and these are the ones that are so vivid. Uh, at each at each um, point that they come in that those planets come into uh, certain quadrature alignments conjunction opposition the two squares like that um, that I felt it would be worthwhile to set out the major themes that I saw uh, from those alignments that we might see playing out in the in the in the next in the next uh, transit that will be upcoming uh, and basically let we would then see how the upcoming years, uh, which we have now just passed, might resemble the, um, what happened during the 1960s conjunction, for example, or, or, uh, or what resemblances might be to the previous square, which was the 1930s. Um, uh, and you could, in retrospect, now see that uh, what we just have gone through over this last decade and uh, slightly more is a kind of very interesting creative combination of the 1960s and the 1930s. Um, plus there's all the other great uh, revolutionary and emancipatory epochs that uh, also happen to coincide with Uranus-Pluto alignments that I traced in Cosmos and Psyche. Uh, and, um, and those, the big themes that I kind of 
pulled out and then described uh, were the, the social and political revolutions, uh, women's suffrage and feminist uh, liberation movements, um, abolitionism and uh, civil rights, racial justice movements. Another big theme was like technological uh, revolutions and advances, uh, the um, major scientific paradigm uh, shifts and breakthroughs, um, uh, sexual revolutions affecting everything from the literature and the, uh, and the arts of a period and the, and the fashions to the social mores and so forth. Uh, the rise of psychedelic um, exploration and research and, and and the science of an ongoing, well, the science really of an emerging uh, worldview across many scholarly disciplines and fields of activity. Those are the things that we would tend to see over and over again during these periods. It's not that these things never happened in between those periods, but during these alignments, there is a very uh, clear uh, intensification of, of those particular motifs uh, within um, uh, human history across many cultures and across many disciplines, so many fields of human activity. Uh, and um, they, they, things just seem to come to a boil as, as the, uh, but reflecting that particular, whatever particular archetypal complex is uh, relevant. And in this case, it's to the Uranus-Pluto combination. So changing of the gods uh, is, is the brainchild of, of Kenny Ossible, who's the co-founder of Bioneers. And uh, that began production about eight, nine years ago. It, it was originally planned as a, as a single feature length documentary, uh, but as the team of really remarkable filmmakers that uh, Kenny gathered around him, um, as, as they worked on it, and, and about, by the way, that team includes um, our own um, Maximilian Diarman uh, and Theo Badashi from our PCC program, uh, uh, alums uh, fr from that program as, as, and there was just actually uh, quite a contribution. I, in, in many ways, I suppose this is a kind of pioneer CIS uh, um, PCC kind of uh, uh, collaboration. But the, the decision was eventually made to sit, uh, kind of expand the, the, the project to include um, 10 separate 30 minute episodes, each of which is devoted to one of those big um, historical cultural themes that I described, you know, political social revolutions, uh, scientific breakthroughs, women's, uh, women's rights, uh, liberation movements, the um, civil rights movements and abolitionism, et cetera. Um, and um, because I had set these out before the decade began, uh, uh, the, the film ended up being a kind of living ongoing test of, of the hypothesis as to whether uh, the uh, historical patterns bearing the, these archetypal features would indeed bear out it during this period. And of course, you know, whether it was the election of a, of a black president to uh, the United States for the first time, or the um, uh, Black Lives Matter, or the Me Too movement, or um, uh, all the other um, categories of the, the legalization of uh, gay marriage, the rise in, in awareness of, of, of uh, trans um, and uh, the, the, the rights and dignity of trans people, uh, the um, legalization of marijuana and the, rec the resurgence of psychedelic uh, research after all these years since the 60s, et cetera. So it, it kind of, the whole, dec the whole period just became this kind of um, really interesting exploration to, uh, to get, do films, uh, do the film on, and in this case, to do all the documentary episodes. So those of you who want to see either this episode again or, or want to see the other nine episodes uh, for free during this particular launch period, you can do so one episode per day uh, starting 
next Tuesday, which is February 22nd. Um, that's uh, 2.22.22, easy to remember. Um, and each day there's an accompanying interview with, a, with, a, with various prominent astrologers, one per day. Um, my one caveat, caveat about this is that uh, the current distributor's promotional style and strategy uh, with daily emails, uh, you know, once you sign up, uh, with daily emails that carry a kind of um, a kind of sales rhetoric that's perhaps not exactly aimed at the CIS level of audience. Um, it's quite a quite a different spirit uh, and approach than uh, either in my of my books or or my own my lectures, etc. But uh, this seems to be the way of the world in film distribution these days. So if you if you'd like to see each episode for free, um, one a day starting next Tuesday, you can sign up for doing so. Just go to the changing, the changingofthegods.com website. So that's changingofthegods.com website. Uh, and on Monday, you'll receive, I think it's Monday, maybe Sunday, you'll receive uh, an email that gives you instructions for how to tune into each episode, I think connecting you to the distributor. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the um, kind of have to tolerate the emails and uh, the kind of sensationalist style of marketing, but the opportunity to see all the episodes is uh, for free right now um, is there. It just has that as the price of admission. And of course, there will be other opportunities down the road, which are still being worked out for, for seeing the film, um, but this is what's available at the moment. Okay, now to the... Uh, planetary situation in 2022. I imagine I'm basically speaking to three different audiences here. On the one hand, uh, one groups like the astrologically initiated uh, and perhaps even quite learned. Uh, and then a second group would be astrologically interested um, and who may also have a good uh, depth psychological uh, uh, knowledge and, uh, and symbolic uh, sense. And then the third group uh, is, pro is uh, no doubt like astrologically um, uninterested and perhaps might be even unpsychological, but is nevertheless looking for any clues at all about what the hell is going on uh, with our country or uh, the world going to uh, hell in a handbasket or, or however else they might frame our, our situation, which is pretty clearly critical. So as an overview, uh, just to begin with, we just, that uh, those of you who saw the uh, episode and those of you who've seen my uh, last two, or either one of my last two kind of archetypal mm, state of the world reports uh, on, the, on the world transits that I've done in 2020, 2021, you'll be familiar, familiar with the fact that I, um, you know, the, the basic nature of the Uranus-Pluto, uh, huge alignment and archetypal energy that's been, you know, more or less, the energy's really been shaping the, the, the zeitgeist so potently for, for uh, this last decade and a half. But then what happened was that towards the end of it, around 2018, Saturn got into the picture and it conjoined Pluto. And uh, that's no joke. Um, and then it squared Uranus right after that, uh, or actually overlapping with it. So it, they all overlapped. Uh, They're all kind of constellated together, you could, you could really feel the action, like say last, a year ago, last January, like January 6th, really kind of carried all the, all the forces at once into a concrescence, to use Whitehead's term, uh, of, of, of a po powerful event. Um, uh, so the, the end of this last decade and the start of the one we're in now, uh, because of Saturn, joining the Uranus Pluto uh, energy that, that uh, it, it sustained that, that energy longer, it shifted it in important ways, kind of Saturnian ways, uh, and it made it all the more a, uh, a sharply 
uh, like a conflict of, of sharply opposing forces. Lyle, I wonder if you could um, just uh, put up the first uh, slide here and we could, uh, it would be helpful for us to, um, to be able to look at, at that um, for, okay, it looks like you've got it up there. I'm, I'm seeing a different image, but now I see it up there. Okay, so what you see there is um, the, that those are like the bell curves of the, you know, that, that kind of overall wave, archetypal waveform that's coming into, uh, coming into history, into the collective psyche, kind of shaping motivations, uh, uh, shaping our perceptions, um, helping to constellate a kind of energy and uh, you know, the kinds of events that we care that uh, typically reflect that, that archetypal energy. And you can see um, that it is pretty widely, uh, let's see if I can open that up more so that I can, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just bring it up here so I can see it on, on my big screen and have a, a slightly more um, uh, clear, there we go. Yeah, so you can see it begins back there at 2007 and it comes all the way there into just past 2020. So that's, that's when the entire transit is within 10 degrees orb. But notice how um, towards the end of it, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction uh, comes in with its own you know, shorter, uh, more kind of condensed curve. And then right after overlapping with that as well, the Saturn square Uranus. So all, all these are happening at once uh, at one point. But one thing to keep in mind is that the, this wave that, let's take the big one, that as it kind of is de descending there and, and is joined by the other two, so something I've emphasized in the past uh, as in, in speaking with you is how when we're talking about world transits, the, the, the uh, archetypal forces that are set in motion during that overall period, they take root in this community and that they, they, um, they, they begin, they initiate movement of, of different kinds. Uh, the films are made, uh, books are written, music is uh, composed and heard and performed. And uh, um, initiatives are, 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 are begun. And, and then uh, they don't just stop when the Uranus square Pluto has reached a certain number of degrees past exact. So much has been set in motion that there, there's a kind of momentum uh, so that the later part of a, of a world transit like this, even though there's a declining curve in terms of the, um, the uh, astronomical situation, archetypally, this really kind of keeps extending as those of you who may remember the 60s and how much it went, that energy went into the 70s, early 70s were very much coherent with and a continuation of, and at times even a, and a, uh, uh, an intensification of what, what, what happened. And that's why uh, like the second half of a decade uh, like that is, is often more um, potently uh, reflective of that complex than the first half, um, because so much more and more is getting set in motion. Okay, so the um, the next uh, let's see. I could could we just look at the um, the the next uh, slide as well, uh, Lyle, for a second, and there you will see. This is, if we were to track more carefully all the uh, exact, um, you know, the, the, the planets are, are all moving ar around the sun, as is the earth, and the results of those, those com complex combinations of movements uh, and orbits means that the, there is a retrograde direct uh, movement and, uh, from the point of view of the earth, and, the, and the, these planets will come closer and then farther away and then closer and then farther away uh, to the exact alignment. And that's what you see with this, with this um, more 
detailed uh, tracking of the of the planetary uh, cycles distances. But for our purposes, it's it's actually much more um, accurately reflective of the big picture. Even though there are these kinds of ups and downs, wa waves, uh, things come in a cr crescent, crescendo, and uh, crescendo, and then um, diminish. But overall, and let's go back to the main, uh, the first one that we were looking at, Lyle. Overall, these are quite, um, they're more helpful in getting a sense for the whole because there is so much more continuity, more momentum, and um, and it's really from the first time that a transit it comes into orb till till it's uh, uh, the last time that it comes within orb. It's it's it tends to be quite quite active. Okay, so we can we can we're done with the slides now, but I just wanted to uh, give you a sense visually of that uh, overall tracking of the. Um, of the major, those are the big, biggest three. We're, we'll talk about a couple other things tonight as well, but uh, those are those are really huge. Um, and I think you've got more enough of the Uranus Pluto uh, under your belt that we we don't need to say much more about that. Um, but with Saturn coming onto that alignment, and then one by one really coming in on Pluto. I mean, this whole the whole uh, pandemic uh, deeply, deeply uh, reflected that twenty that Saturn Pluto conjunction. All the, the the sense of well the 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 collective encounter with mortality, the the, the enormous crisis. You know, so many people are saying uh, we haven't had anything like this since nine eleven. Well, that was the last time Saturn and Pluto were in an axial alignment, the opposition, and this is a conjunction. Um, and then you also have the um, you also have the, uh, just, just generally speaking, when Saturn hits Pluto, or in this case, both of them, it, it's kind of like when the, when the rubber hits the road, the, 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 screw, the, 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 the screws tighten, the, the, the pressures increase, uh, the reality principle asserts itself extremely potently, that's the Plutonic, and in unpredictable ways uh, and erratically, and that's the uh, Uranian influence. And the accelerating tensions tend to reach a crisis point. Um, so as, as I talk about these different current alignments, I'm gonna try to address both the collective level and, and how these same world transit alignments can be felt in our individual lives and, and inner experience as well. Because that's uh, we we all participate in the in the in the world soul the the anima mundi world soul of the world the, the collective psyche in, in Jung's terms but the the beauty of turning the collective psyche or the collective unconscious into recognizing that it's really the anima mundi is one it helps us recognize that just because it or part of it might be unconscious to us doesn't mean it's it's unconscious period but also it helps us recognize that the our, our deep psyche is actually the deep psyche of of the cosmos it's it's not just um we're, we're not in our isolated uh, uh brain corners as individuals nor even as a species uh we, we are embedded in a collective psyche that is could be seen as like the species mind or the, the homo sapiens um, collective psyche, but th that ultimately is embedded in uh, deeper and larger um, fields of, of, of consciousness and agency and, and identity that includes the whole earth community and ultimately like the, 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 the solar system and, and the galaxy and, and the cosmos itself and people who do deep explorations, whether it's through psychedelics or through deep meditation, or sometimes it can come in and just a, uh, an epiphany uh, out of the blue while, while you're um, walking through the woods or, or washing dishes. Um, the uh, people who do have those encounters with their own really deep dimensions of their psyche tune into the fact that they they're that in a certain way all of the cosmos is in each of us uh 
as well as each of us being in all of the cosmos. It's, it's a uh, very mysterious relationship. Um, so a couple of uh, last, I think, crucial points. I kind of made them in the, I think these were included in the interviews that were done with me in the, uh, in the film, uh, which was recorded. I think my, my parts were mostly recorded about seven years ago, 2015 or so. Um, but again, um, basic principles. It's, this is not mechanistic causation. It's not like linear uh, uh, efficient causes coming from the planets like electromagnetic radiation, et cetera, gravity, uh, that's causing things to be this way in a certain way. It doesn't seem to work that way. It's more synchronistic. It's, it's, it's more um, a, a synchronous correlation that is meaningful, meaningful through and through. Meaning is what is cohering it. Uh, Jung's the, the, who, the person, of course, who, who uh, grasped uh, or coined that term for something that had been observed for millennia. I mean, indigenous cultures totally live in a, in a, in a synchronistic universe. Um, you only need the concept of synchronicity for, for a modern mind um, to be able to start grappling with what um, most of humanity's actually lived, lived in uh, all along. But discernment is important. You can always be projecting things, and uh, and that's where a discernment. So it's a real I-thou relationship with the world around you and the events, uh, and not just a projecting of what your your needs are or your skepticism or whatever. But there's an openness to to the meaning being communicated. Um, so uh, so it's it's uh, synchronicity. It's everything breathing together rather than mechanistic causality. Um, and then the archetypes that are the fundamental principles that we're studying here, they really uh, need to be seen as um, multivalent. They, they have a range of ways of manifesting while being faithful to themselves. Uh, uh, that includes light and shadow and everything in between, um, noble and ignoble, uh, trivial and profound. Um, uh, and so forth. Uh, and that's where human agency comes in. And that's where we, we have a responsibility to um, play our role in, in, in the whole. We're, we're, we are the cosmos who has been given a kind of, or who, and which has evolved through us to uh, reach a certain form of consciousness that happens to have an awareness of the planets and the correlations with the with these archetypal principles and who happen to uh, have this kind of gift of being able to be more conscious of what would be otherwise unconscious, uh, in which case we'd be more puppets of those energies. And now we can be kind of tracking them, being a little more aware of uh, more life enhancing versus uh, uh, more destructive ways of, of living out these energies. Um, so it's always, we're always going for participation here, for more uh, co-creativity, um, <clears throat> a greater level of discernment and conscious awareness and, and, and self-discernment uh, and bringing a, a, a moral attitude towards, towards our, um, our engagement with these, with these forces. And then these, these uh, great archetypal patterns seem to synchronically uh, uh, manifest across many individuals and cultures at the same time during these world transits. Um, but they are also diachronic through history. Uh, each time the alignments come into, um, uh, each time the, those cycles come into uh, uh, alignment. <clears throat> and then finally, there's a kind of cumulative evolutionary quality to the whole picture. It's, it's not just a repetitive cycle, novelty, human agency, and who knows what other invisible factors are at work that shape and evolve the, the, the manifestation of these energies. Okay, so um, let's say a few things now about the Saturn square Uranus. It's totally kind of dominating the show these days, uh, uh, very much um, 
you can't read a, a headline uh, today with, without recognizing how much it's, it's, it's present. Um, the, the Uranus principle, of course, is related to the unexpected, the trickster energy, um, the rebellious energy. Uh, it, it wants freedom. It, it is pushing towards the new, the future. Uh, it, it's connected often with, with, with youth as well, um, uh, innovation, originality, but also uh, kind of highly unpredictable, resistant to, uh, to restraint or order, uh, et cetera. While Saturn is just the opposite. It's order, it's, it's constraint, it's structure, it's inhibition. Um, it's 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 the weight of the past. It's the foundations that get allow us to get to this point. It's our backbone. It's it's our um, it's our sense of uh, gravitas. It's what we learn over many years of experience, etc. Um, but it also can be oppressive. It can be stuck in resistance, and and um, and so forth. And so you bring these two together, uh, and it's a highly unstable combination. Um, the there's a tendency to uh, build up pressures between the forces for change and the forces for resistance, uh, the, uh, of resistance to change. And um, that, uh, should I bring that down here? Huh. A couple of things I didn't bring here, but that's okay. I'll do it by, by memory. Um, the, the there's a tendency for this to kind of build up uh, like within a closed system, the tension of the pressures for change and the resistance to change or the, 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 the enduring power of the foundational structures that are already in place in the status quo. Uh, those can um, be equally active, kind of poised, vis-a-vis -vis each other in such a way that it builds up to a, uh, to a crisis point. And, um, and then there tends to be uh, either a, a collapse, a breakdown, uh, a, a, an accident, um, a, uh, a split, a schism, a separation, a, a divorce, a, um, a civil uh, uprising, dissidence, uh, divisiveness, tensions between groups, um, between conservative and progressive, between right and left, but also within each of these two, um, there'll be these uh, divisions, these kind of um, powerful schismatic uh, impulses, the, the circular firing squads, as they call them, uh, that are, they're, as they're called in the Republican Party now, where the, 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 the more uh, radically right are, um, out to get the um, traditional Republicans, or or in the Democratic Party, uh, the 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 more um, whether you want to call them uh, radical or the or or the more uh, progressive versus the more um, moderately liberal within the Democratic Party, being being in in real combat with each other at times. Um, or it's the divorce from within the family uh, uh, or between uh, marital, uh, but also can be professional. Think of, think of Freud and Jung, for example, who, who um, separated, had their divorce, as it were, breaking under their Saturn-Uranus transit, which went right across their sun and moon connection. I mean, you know, it was, you know, Jung was viewed by Freud as his crown prince. And, uh, and then this great disappointment when Jung, who had Saturn Uranus himself and went through his own kind of breakdown, breakthrough and, uh, uh, and, um, and resistance to the Freudian dogma. Um, and so there is this great divorce, which in some ways is a still significant divorce in the field of depth psychology and psychotherapy, you know, between the Freudian psychoanalysts and the Jungian analysts and archetypal psychologists, et cetera. Um, though many bridges are being made uh, these days, uh, including somebody like Stan Groff, um, who, who uh, really did a brilliant job of um, um, in integrating 
the overall Freudian and Jungian perspectives and, and, and much more. Um, and that's also the idea of the bridge, the bridges that are being made between the uh, opposing forces. That's um, a good, it's the same thing like with infrastructure. Saturn Uranus is so dealing with infrastructure. Um, engineers often have Saturn Uranus. It's this combination of practical, pragmatic, material uh, structures and inventiveness and uh, coming up with solutions and safety uh, measures and so forth. And when Saturn Uranus periods come up, there tends to be simultaneously lots of problematic uh, events in that area, Techno electrical grid breakdowns, power grids, uh, power uh, outages, um, uh, bridges collapsing and, and so forth. Uh, and, um, and there's a great push for infrastructure, like rebuilding, uh, retrofitting, uh, re, uh, repairing, and so forth. And that's, that's totally what Saturn Uranus is about as well. Um, uh, you could say, um, you know, I think, I think of all the, uh, let, me, let me go through some of the, the, the major themes of, of, of Saturn Uranus. You could say, just generally speaking, the whole idea of crisis and crisis management. That's, that's a, those are key themes for Saturn Uranus. Crises tend to happen. They, they tend to come unexpectedly, like seems like the pandemic is declining and then Omicron comes on. Uh, or then um, this kind of, un, uh, you know, the, the great instability of, of life today, not knowing not only about the pandemic, but also about, um, there's all sorts of disruptions. It's disruptions of, uh, of the supply chain. Um, it's, uh, it's also many people quitting jobs, uh, like, and um, the, the assertion of their freedom to, you know, within the work realm, which is very Saturnian. Often there, it's a real tendency to make a break, the end of a, of, of a, uh, of a um, way of being in some way. Um, I think I might have talked about last time, people like uh, in terms of crisis and crisis management, like somebody like Sully Sullenberg, who's born with Saturn square Uranus, the early 50s version of it. And he had, uh, had quite a potent version of it in his natal chart, had Mercury on it. And he taught aviation safety and how to handle crises uh, as a pilot. And, um, and then he had it happen to himself. And he's the one that safely landed the, the, um, the jet on the uh, Hudson the couple days or so before, before uh, back in 2009, just before o Obama's first inauguration. That's a perfect example of, of a, of a well-integrated, um, <clears throat> well well-lived Saturn Uranus because Saturn Uranus was both in his birth chart and it was happening at that point, it was a Saturn opposite Uranus in the, in the, uh, in the sky. That was the last world transit of Saturn Uranus. Um, think of somebody like Churchill who also had it. Um, Saturn Uranus often brings mistakes. People make a lot of, a lot, there's a lot of errors. Errors just happen because of technical breakdowns, the internet uh, stops, um, knock on wood uh, <laughs> tonight. Um, the, people having difficulties with Zoom or whatever platform, the computer crashes, or, or it could be, um, you know, many, many other things like that tend to happen. But there's also a tendency to make mistake, mistakes in judgment. It's a, it has to do with like Saturn being like, here's the, the, the structure, and then the trickster comes in, a disruption happens, whoops, whoops, that wasn't supposed to happen. Um, and then the Saturnian quality comes in again as you're gonna to have to pay for that. That's gonna, you know, this is, there. that's a, uh, there's a price for, for that. That's, it's got consequences. Saturn has, brings consequences for your actions. Um, it, it makes, it is the archetype of, of problem, the archetypal uh, principle of the problematic dimension of life, which the Uranian, when it's connecting to Saturn, um, brings in through its unpredictable um, events. Uh, 
but I bring up Churchill because he made great mistakes, but he also, uh, he also was a great crisis manager through World War II. Um, Biden, who's born with the conjunction, he's running for president and he says a couple of years ago, he says, we're gonna manage the hell out of this crisis. That's, so, that's such a Saturn Uranus um, attitude. It's, it's such a, a good example actually of all the political rhetoric he could draw on uh, he he would express his own Saturn Uranus conjunction, um, and that's because archetypal complexes put unconscious pressures on metaphor selection that we spontaneously use, or on word selection, or on policy uh, preferences, and so forth. Um, I, a big element in Saturn and Uranus is. Uh, between the past and the future, but also the old and the young, different generations, there can be generational conflicts. And it's not just, uh, and it's often not something that is pushed by the generations against each other, though that can easily happen, but it also can be the, something that happens kind of by virtue of circumstances beyond everybody's control, like the fact that, um, the effort to pre preserve the life of older people during the pandemic meant that much younger people um, had to suppress their activities more than they might have had to otherwise, um, because they could bring home the virus to their uh, uh, to their um, grandparents or 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 somebody who's um, uh, has immune uh, vulnerabilities and uh, etc and then right now this like it's time to let children go back to school without masks and etc and play and uh, it's so you can just see how there, there's that kind of conflict but it's also also been very potent during these last three years, looking at it between generations where um, older generations are holding on to the jobs while the younger are unemployed. Uh, uh, that can be an issue. Um, it, can, it, it can take many forms. It can also take the form of ev the even generations that are, for example, much younger than mine. Like I'm a, I'm a, um, a, a baby boomer. And there are, I've, I've talked to millennials who are, who are describing the, both the cultural um, interests and, and also uh, social media choices and styles as being beyond them. Um, it's like there are, I think there's almost an acceleration of generational uh, change, partly technologically um, mediated. Anyway, so this can happen in, in, in many ways. But the whole idea with all these is to, is to um, help bring about a, um, help bring about a, uh, some kind of a um, integration of Saturn and Uranus so that there's more of a, uh, more of a quality of, I mean, this is what the dialectical in synthesis is all about. Hegel was born with Saturn Uranus, and that's what it's all about. Jung was born with it, uh, the opposition. And he, he, he's all about like holding the tension of opposites, be faithful to both sides. And then um, if you can sustain that tension uh, with a profound enough uh, engagement, you can also uh, be able to... Uh, be the place within which a an unexpected integration takes place. The 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 divine third un, unpacks, uh, un, un, emerges of its own uh, accord. The the sacred marriage of the opposites, the complexio oppositorum, um, the conjunctio oppositorum, the conjunction of opposites takes place, uh, and you can't. It's a live birth. You can't predict exactly how that might happen, but we can work towards it. Okay, I'm I'm running out of time here. Before I want to give uh, some time to 
questions and answers. Let me just say a couple words about the, um, yeah, I probably had enough here to talk about uh, without the episode, but I'm glad uh, because, but I'm glad you all got to see the episode. It's, it's well worth it and it communicates a lot. Um, we're all going, the United States is going through its Pluto return. As a matter of fact, it reaches exact alignment um, this, this next week. But it's with any of these big returns, that means Pluto's coming back to where it was in 1776. Uh, you don't see this ever happen in an individual's life because Pluto has such a, a big cycle. But you do see Pluto transits in individual lives, and we have a very good sense for what, what that's about. Um, and uh, we can see that all the major um, qualities that the Pluto return uh, has, is, has already activated uh, in, in, in the US, we can, we can see it vividly already. Um, the, because of the US's outsized influence in the world, its, it's morphic field disseminates uh, so readily into the zeitgeist of the larger world. Um, and the larger world already had its plutonic potential fully activated from the Uranus-Pluto square it's been going through uh, the last past decade and a half. But um, this overall period, just looking at our own you know, US situation and what we're deep in the center of right now and, and is being worked out. I mean, we're in, the, we're in, the, in a crucible underworld of transformation and uh, the social political universe kind of uh, is imbued with this plutonic energy. I have spoken of like Hades swallowing up Persephone, the soul of America, as it were, uh, during the Uranus Pluto square uh, in the last um, uh, few years of our of the political administration that was in charge. But um, also, I, I really want to emphasize so important, the flushing to the surface of the of the demons of the poisons of the shadow uh, uh, the, of, of the collective, uh, our national shadow, and the and the repressed and concealed depths that can only be confronted and, and addressed and, and possibly transformed if they are brought to the consciousness of the nation. And we've been doing that big time for these last few years. But we have to recognize that we inevitably are going to be seeing and already are seeing really a lot of plutonic themes like the, the dec decay and, and, and destruction of existing conditions and beliefs and structures um, that requires a really deep transformation and, and renewal of life. Um, above all, on the level of, of our earth community, ecological justice, social justice, um, uh, biodiversity, uh, and, and just kind of waking up to the fact that we are, um, we are participants in a larger communion of biospiritual subjects in our in, in, in our earth community. But in the meantime, Pluto, typically we see like power struggles with dominating individuals or institutions, clashes of will, uh, autocracy, tyrants, uh, encounter with destructive forces, um, either inside us or outside us. Also inside the nation, as well as outside the nation or geopolitical, uh, there's, uh, an unconscious attraction towards dangerous situations or environments that are that are marked by life and death urgency, um, uh, and encountering the violent forces of nature: storms, fires, fires, thunder and lightning, volcanoes, earthquakes, um, all plutonic. Um, but the other side of it is, you know, a great potential for tremendous transformation strengthening of the will, uh, personal renewal, um, sense of one's life being moved and transformed by, by deep evolutionary energies that are coming through us in the same way that a mother feels when, they're, when they are um, giving birth. And in some ways, yes, they're giving birth and they're bringing their all into it, but there's also like something bigger is coming through them. It's like nature itself, mother nature, the, the, the everything is just moving um, to bring about this, uh, and, and one is participating in it, bringing one's all, and at the same time, um, 
feeling it come through one as something uh, in some ways, in some sense, distinct from or uh, uh, encompassing ourselves. And that's what we're, I think, all involved in. We're all participating in an enormous uh, transformational um, moment and, and crucible. Um, I'm just going to mention that there's a, uh, before I go to the, 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 the Q&A, um, that there is a, a Jupiter-Neptune conjunction that's just coming into orb right now. Uh, and um, it's, uh, it's an extreme, and, and that will go for the rest of this year, basically. It'll be coming, be, be most tight during uh, the next few months over the spring, uh, early summer, but it really will be coming back into stay and more or less staying within orb this entire year, right into uh, January next year. That Jupiter Neptune energy, it's a very, um, it's idealistic. It's ex it, it tends to expand the imagination. Uh, it tends to bring um, a greater faith in life, uh, more hopefulness, uh, tendency to trust life's generosity. Uh, there can be greater humanitarian impulses, more, more uh, joyful altruism. There can also be a urge to um, enter into one's imaginative life more fully. Uh, uh, there can be uh, more mystical experiences, feeling at one with the universe. Um, uh, that's getting into things like um, film, theater, music, uh, uh, those kinds of um, uh, Neptunian transcendent kinds of uh, expressions of the imagination that, that, that can, that can um, elevate us. At the same time, there's a tendency with Jupiter and Neptune, all have their shadows. There could be unrealistic optimism. There can be misguided uh, uh, idealism, um, gullibility, naivete. There could be um, misplaced sympathy or sentimentality. Uh, there could be um, sometimes overly concerned with celebrity and celebrity image and uh, kind of bedazzled by media and advertising images of success and happiness and that kind of thing. Um, uh, or there can be this tendency towards a kind of spiritual bypass in which we uh, are trying to always see everything in such a positive light that, and we ascribe all events uh, to benevolent intentions uh, and overlook significant differences that we should be attending to all to uh, serve uh, this um, kind of mythic ideal or, or uh, unity, uh, sense of unity. So we have to use discernment. Um, Okay, I am going to go to um, my um, questions now that I think um, my team over there at CIS is going to show me or share with me. Is anybody going to? I don't have anything right now. If see. you click on that button that says Q&A at the bottom of your screen. Oh, right. Thank you very much. You'll see them in there. Got it. Okay. Um, Yeah, um, since you, this is from Maurice Trout, since humans have a tendency to remember the negative experiences and dwell on fearful scenarios, how can the upcoming planetary constellations help us encourage each other to traverse the pain and move through what is difficult rather than let it paralyze us and shut us down? Um, yeah, and just like how, how, how do we deal with the trauma traumas that we've all been through in one form or another and, and many forms, and yet uh, not let those paralyze us uh, or not let those become so uh, obsessive in our ongoing reality that we, we, we fail to um, connect to a greater trust in life. Well, um, one thing I think is uh, to support each other, to be um, in community is very important. Another thing is to take time for yourself to um, connect with what is most nourishing, uh, whether it's 
music that you particularly love or walking by the sea um, or in a, in a woods that's particularly dear to you. Uh, uh, it, staying connected with those, um, with those experiences can be, can be very healing. Um, the other thing is when people are in pain uh, or were in pain, and the idea is indeed to move through it and not just say, well, you don't have to look at it that way or whatever, um, uh, or to suppress it. It's the way, the way through is, or the way past it is through. And, um, and this is where, you know, I, th I think of the most plutonic uh, psychotherapist probably ever is Stan Groff, who's got, you know, every, almost all the planets uh, inner and outer are aspecting his natal, in his natal chart are, are aspecting Pluto. And he is kind of the master of being, um, trusting that process of the emergence of really difficult, you know, trauma, traumatic uh, memories and, and uh, painful somatic and, and emotional places and trusting that and go, going with it, encouraging it because it's bringing it to consciousness. The, the full experience of it is the funeral pyre of, of it, as, as he said. And, um, and the more we can find that in ourselves, the uh, being able to do that and connecting with the bigger cycle of death and rebirth and not, and realizing that that state of, of uh, no exit of we're never going to get out of here, uh, the state of hell, that's, it's, it's an archetypal gestalt that's quite convincing when you're in it, but it's not the whole story. It's part of a bigger process. It's moving towards birth. Uh, uh, I like to say it's, it's, um, Hell is a processive phenomenon. It's a, a, pheno a reality, and it's and as soon as you actually see that in some way, there's a liberation from it in, in part. But the more you connect with that in yourself, then you're in a, a position to be able to be with others through theirs, and that that's that's huge. Um, much more could be said on the. Uh, all these questions are are are, are deep, but. I've, I've, in the interest of moving through a few, I'll keep going. Um, from Victoria, do the planets suggest a larger systemic shift like the death and rebirth of democracy or capitalism? A very transformed capitalism, let's hope. Um, uh, I think, um, uh, or, or a, a radically transformed economic system um, for, for so many reasons is, is called for. Uh, we're moving into Uranus trine Pluto for the rest of the decade. Uh, and that's, I think, going to help. I qualify that statement because even though I firmly believe it will, it will give us some really uh, a better harmonious kind of uh, influx of the Plutonic and Uranian energies mm -hmm. in uh, connection with each other in a way that is easier to handle. But everything depends on how we're handling the current um, hard aspects that we've been going through from Saturn, Uranus, and Pluto. Uh, the consequences of the, of the big decisions that are having to be made day by day right now um, in all of our lives and at the national uh, and international level are just gonna have consequences uh, for, for years to come and will certainly shape what's possible under these new uh, alignments. But, if you combine that Uranus trying Pluto that all of us will go through the whole world and the fact that the US is going through not only a Pluto return, but a Uranus return that will um, be quite tight by the uh, later part of this decade. And that's because Uranus and Pluto are coming right back to where they were when the US was born in 1776. That really does suggest something like the death and rebirth of, of democracy. If it goes well, if it's a if it's a successful birth, um, you know the first Uranus return of the U.S. was a civil war, and Lincoln de de declared it was like this is a new birth of, of freedom. Um, it was like he re rewrote the Declaration of Independence and Constitution. He and 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 the uh, the many progressive. Uh, 
blacks and whites of his time um, made succeeded in bringing about a shift. It's it's still we're still working on that shift, but it was just a huge um, event, and it could have gone another way, um, and that's why. Uh, but it was a it was a new birth of freedom. That's the Uranus return. A new a new form of democracy uh, emerged, and we're still seeking to bring a new form of democracy. God knows we, we need it. Let's, let's all work towards uh, that to emerge in, in this decade. Question from Erica. How do you suggest one deals with the anxiety while moving through a challenging transit? Um, deep breathing helps. Uh, slow, deep breathing. Um, uh, being, um, being in community, uh, being in connection with others, sharing your anxiety and not bottling it up inside, uh, uh, but you know, seeking assistance. Um, also, I think for those of you who are astrologically in, uh, initiated and informed and you know how to track your transits and your natal chart and uh, and the world transits. You have a if you do the research, you can see that the people with who've gone through and in your own life, um, it's the hard aspect transits and uh, and in world transits, personal ones as well as in our natal chart that can have the most positive, fruitful results, even though they cause quite a bit of anxiety and tension typically as you're dealing with the opposing uh, energies or the, you know, uh, at, how did I put it? I was thinking about Saturn and Uranus square. It's like when they come into hard aspect, they square off against each other and you have to deepen your consciousness and expand it in order to um, take in uh, and make possible a, a synthesis. But um, if you do this, the studying, um, you, and and this then then you then you see like wow this just because I've got this transit coming doesn't mean it's the end of the world uh, this could actually signify uh, a, an a, an outcome that could come from these archetypal um, energies being worked through in me that will leave me uh, deeply grateful about this time and what what I've gone through and what I've done um, and so. If you track how that's happened in other people's lives whom you admire, uh, then it teaches you to have a, be a better um, recognition of, so you, so you don't become phobic about uh, transits and you, 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 you trust the larger wisdom. Uh, just remember what an, an amazing, um, what an amazing, uh, phenomenon it is that uh, the movements of the planets so exquisitely coincide with the with our experience personal and collective and with the 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 archetypal forms and and shaping of our experience uh, collectively and individually um, the fact that this is happening to, to all of us on this earth and that each moment has these correlations going on so points to a level of intelligence and archetypal um, beauty at work in the cosmos that is in some very mysterious way focused on our moving earth. I, I love those images of the earth the planets, you know, moving through in a spiral around the around the sun as they're all moving through the galaxy, and yet somehow in our solar system, for those of us here on Earth, there there seems to be um, a a cosmic focusing of meaning on our planet, on every individual born here, and on every moment that we go through together and individually. It's, as Stan Groff says, it, 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 it shatters the rational mind's capacity to wrap our head around a, uh, a cosmic um, being 
on, uh, that that could constellate such an a, a grand uh, orchestration, and it suggests something of like a, an almost uh, biblical sense of like not a sparrow falls without thy knowledge, um, and that can give one a trust. It can give one a uh, a faith. It can give a sense that the the universe is bathing us with love all the time. This it's a care, um, and so I think we're in a very special position in our time, even as it's the most critical in some ways that humanity's ever faced um, with the greatest responsibilities that we've ever faced for our, our role in the larger uh, earth community. At the same time, we are getting help. We are getting um, a kind of cosmic gift that it's, a, it's, a, it's an act of grace. And uh, I, 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 I hold it uh, precious to in my own life, and I, I know that it is relevant to everyone's lives. Um, I think it's, uh, I, I just want to finish with a final thought here uh, about how we can orient our lives in such a time, because I know we're, we're at our limit here. Uh, thanks, all of you who, who have um, listened to all this time. Um, but I'm, I was trying to think of, in my own life and, and in others whom I know well, like what, what's, and the, all the biographies I've read and so forth, how can we orient our lives in such a time that could, and, and make decisions about, uh, about how we can best contribute to the larger causes uh, that are at stake right now? And, you know, if I could just put it in the most homely everyday terms, um, I think first it's like, find, find what you feel a certain competence at and, and that, that you take a kind of creative joy in doing, but also that you see as being useful to others, that, you, that, pe that others find useful. And then give yourself to that, devote yourself, be faithful to the gift, cultivate it, um, hone it, discipline it, um, explore it and expand it and work with others, work collaboratively uh, and, and, and hone it in, in, in community because in isolation, you're only gonna get so far, but you, if you've got a, a collaborative feedback and, and um, a combination of, of, of supportiveness and, and honest, uh, you know, critical efforts towards, towards ever uh, better manifestations of, of what one is doing, um, it's gonna be great. Uh, it's gonna be much greater improvement than would happen on one's own. So, I mean, that's basically, I just, I think of how to, you know, choose how to live, you know, day to day and devote your life and just find what you're competent at, what you feel, the creative joy. It, that's a sign of the, of the cosmos's joy coming through you um, and its creativity coming through you. And that's your individuated form to attend to, to, to cultivate, to water it and, and uh, look at it uh, each day and make sure that it's, it's growing. And, and, but it needs to be useful to, to, to the community. It needs to be useful to others. Um, to serve the whole, not just yourself, and then uh, and then give yourself to that. Um, make it uh, that. That's what turns the eternal child and it's all it's it's creativity into something that endures. Is you you integrate the the Senex, the Saturn uh, with the Puer Eternus, the Puella Etern Eterna, the the, the eternal uh, child in us. Um, you integrate that with the Senex, with the, with the wise, old, <laughs> disciplined, experienced uh, part of it, and, and you bring about that synthesis. Um, and if, you're, if you have children, be good parents. I mean, that's basically it. Uh, at least that's it for now. Okay, now we'll bring Alex back to, to say good night. And thank you for being with me again another year for our... Uh, a little annual overview of, of uh, the this, this, this state of the, of, the, of the zeitgeist and how we can best explore and how, how we can best contribute to its, its positive uh, unfolding in the future.
Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. We hope you'll join us for more of our upcoming talks and workshops. Tonight's talk was recorded and it will be available to watch later, except for that opening episode of the new documentary series, The Changing of the Gods. This special screening was only available to those who joined us live. So if you revisit this event later or you're watching this for the first time after that live stream, please refer to the information below this video to learn more about how to find and watch that episode. We will also feature this talk on our podcast, which you can find at ciispod.com or by searching CIIS Public Programs on your favorite podcast app. Thanks again for joining us and have a wonderful evening.